Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines, assassination of Iranian nuclear scientist sparks global criticism, unions and activists across the world protest Amazon's policies, and the suffering of the poor hits new highs in the US. In our first story, the assassination of Iran's top nuclear scientist Dr. Mohsen Fakhrizadeh has drawn harsh condemnation from around the world. Dr. Mohsen, who is 62, was shot and killed by unknown assailants on Friday, November 27th in Absad city, which is around 70 kilometers from Tehran. Assailants attacked his vehicle with bombs and guns. Dr. Mohsen was gravely injured in the attack and later succumbed to injuries in hospital. The encounter between the assailants and Dr. Mohsen's bodyguards resulted in a few more deaths. While the Iranian media said the assailants were killed in the shootout, Times of Israel said that those killed were his bodyguards and that the assailants had escaped. Dr. Mohsen, who was professor of physics at Imam Hussein University at Tehran, was also heading the Defense Ministry's organization of defensive innovation and research. Iranian President Hassan Rouhani said on Saturday that the assassination was carried out by the mercenary usurper Zionist regime. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu had mentioned Dr. Mohsen's name in a presentation in April 2018. He had accused him of heading Iran's so-called clandestine nuclear program. Senior Swedish politician Karl Bildt called the assassination a plot to derail the possibilities of betterment of Iran-US relations after the election of Joe Biden. Biden has promised to rejoin the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action or the Iran nuclear deal, from which Donald Trump had withdrawn in 2018. The deal has been opposed by Israel and Saudi Arabia, who also expressed their reservations regarding Biden's promise to rejoin it. The United Nations expert on extrajudicial summary and arbitrary executions, Agnes Kalamad, called the assassination of Dr. Mohsen an act of terror and a violation of the UN Charter, which prohibits use of force extraterritorially. In our next story, a global coalition of progressive movements and trade unions staged a massive-scale boycott campaign of Amazon on the annual Black Black Friday sales that fell on November 27, that is Friday. The coalition held an organized global campaign in 15 major countries that constitute the bulk of Amazon's consumer base under the banner of Make Amazon Pay. Dozens of international and national trade union movements, trade justice groups, environmentalist organizations, and progressive political movements participated in the campaign. Trade unions led the way with major international trade union confederations like Industrial, International Trade Union Confederation, that's ITAC, the UNI Global, Work, UNI Global Union, Amazon Workers International and Public Services International, among others. Several of these groups and their national and regional affiliates also organized massive walkout strikes on Friday. Thousands of Amazon employees are reported to have participated in the strike. In their campaign statement, the organizers pointed out how despite reaping huge profits during the pandemic, the company continues to evade taxes. The statement said, but instead of giving back to the societies that helped it grow, the corporation starves them of tax revenue. In 2019, Amazon paid just 1.2% tax in the United States where the corporation holds its headquarters. And finally, it's holiday season in the US, but the country faces an unprecedented crisis of hunger, poverty and unemployment. All these issues have been made worse by the COVID-19 pandemic. In this video, we take a look at the scale of the crisis. It is holiday season in the United States. This year, though, the U.S. is going through one of the worst crises in recent times. As of November 27th, the U.S. has reported more than 13.2 million COVID-19 cases with close to 270,000 deaths. The country is recording over 10,000 new cases every day. However, COVID-19 is not the only crisis affecting the country. According to a recent study, the poverty rate in the U.S. rose by 2% over the summer. In September and October, the poverty rate rose to 11.3%. The Poor People's Campaign estimates the number is much higher though, and that even before the pandemic, 140 million people are poor or one emergency away from being poor. Mile-long queues at food banks are being seen across the country. People are waiting hours to pick up food and essential goods in states like California, New York, Wisconsin, Texas, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and South Carolina. In Los Angeles, volunteers estimated that more than 1,000 people lined up on Saturday outside just one food bank. Almost 26 million Americans are reportedly struggling to afford food, up by 6 million because of the pandemic. Recently, Feeding America, a nonprofit that runs food banks and soup kitchens, estimated that the number of individuals dependent on such aid to feed themselves may rise up to 50 million by the end of the year. At least a quarter of all children are expected to be affected too. Meanwhile, jobless claims rose up to 778,000 in the week ending on November 21st. The total number of people receiving unemployment benefits under schemes across the country is 6.1 million. 13 million people face a major crisis by the end of the year, as two important programs providing benefits to the unemployed are set to expire. 
Amid the lack of food and work, many face the risk of evictions. According to studies, close to 13 million people are at risk of being evicted when the moratorium on evictions imposed by the CDC expires on December 31st. Before the pandemic, close to 3.7 million people were evicted every year. Families forced out of their homes will have to go to shelters or double up at relatives or even sleep in the streets. This will make them even more vulnerable to the virus. Meanwhile, 650 US billionaires increased their wealth by $1 trillion since March. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back on Monday with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch. Yeah, cantar, que vamos a triunfar, a